it was a moment where I just surrendered to the experience. And that's awesome that you guys brought it up because it's just bringing so many memories back now. And, and I can see it for what it really was. It was surrendering to the nature, to being one with nature, to trusting other people, which we forget so often in our lives. And it was just a, an incredible sense of achievement. Welcome to the Optimum Human Podcast, the show that interviews the world's top experts in fitness, nutrition, mindset, and beyond. Let's get into the show. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Optimum Human. My name is Brian McKay. He's Claude Petrullis. And so, 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 okay, cool, cool. I, I like that. It's taking a Yeah, it's my new talk. thing. Perfect. Anyways, <laughs> we've got another amazing guest. Oh, man, this is going to be one of those podcasts, huh? It's always one of those podcasts. Yeah. yeah. So we got Marta Wild. Am I saying your name right, Marta? Oh, freaking awesome does it sound. I love it. Yes, it is indeed Marta Wild. <laughs> awesome. How are you doing awesome. today, Marta? I am awesome, and thank you for having me, guys. Well, thank you for coming on to this um I was going to say circus, but it's more of a sideshow. So, <laughs> yes. uh, <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully our listeners can can get some some value out of uh, us talking. And well, you're going to be the one doing the, the knowledge. We're just going to be the ones kind of trying to get at it. So, um, Marta, first off, for our listeners who don't know about you, um, what do you do? I know I know it's a loaded question, but. It is a loaded question, and I do not have the 30-second elevator pitch, so do not expect that from me, guys. I just roll with it. Fair what enough. do I do? I, I have been uh, called a witch several times. Uh, <laughs> Brian gets that I, too sometimes. Yeah, me, me too. Especially when his hair is long. <laughs> Brilliant. Love it. <laughs> uh, I have been called the witch, um, and the other half of of the duo that is me and my husband have been called the terminator um as you guys have spoken to him before i'm sure he shared mo most of his stuff there um so we are the terminator and the witch duo and basically what we do is assisting we're assisting people in living their unlimited life and the unlimited life um comes in three main forms in terms of the way how we assist people so very much so most of our clients come to us with physical health issues that no one has been able to help them with before and we're talking from autoimmune diseases infertility cancer depression gut issues ibs sort of all sorts of things it doesn't necessarily have to fit into a, a specific bracket because if you um understand it from the way we understand the human body um it all usually stems from one place. It just presents itself in different symptoms. And it's understanding why it shows up as certain symptoms that allows us to assist people that have been told by the doctors that there's nothing that can be done. Uh, either a surgery or medication is the only option and all sorts of things like that. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's one stream. Um, the, the other stream is people that just feel stuck, really. And the reason why we are able to assist those guys is because, is because we, in the past we're stuck for months, if not years in our lives without actually having a clue which way to go. Um, and forgetting that all the knowing and wisdom really is within. And it's not about learning something new, it's about re-remembering the truth. So we assist these guys in re-remembering the truth that everything is within. And in fact, they might have just forgotten or buried it under a lot of um, stories they've been telling themselves. And the last avenue um, of the unlimited life that we assist people with is, is coaches, other coaches, other therapists that either feel like they require some assistance themselves, whether with their health or anything else in their life, but genuinely comes down to them wanting to assist their clients even more, having seen the results we get with the people that work with us, having followed our journey often for quite a while, they reach out and say to us, hey guys, can we, can we have some of that ourselves? Um, which is really, it is just an amazing aspect of what we do because knowing that there is no competition, there is no stealing clients and stuff like that, that a lot of people are afraid of for us is that genuine joy of being able to share what we offer to the guys that work with us, to other people that then can go and, and share that with their clients. The more of us know, the more of that us trust and believe in the fact that that we can't do this. In fact, we can't assist people. 
that choose into that experience, the, the happier we are. So it's not like we are guarding all of our stuff and saying you can't have that unless you are a client on a one-to-one basis and all sorts of stuff. Mm. And, you know, that used to be a belief of ours that we back in God knows how many years ago, I can't even remember that, we were afraid that, oh, if we do this, if we tell people too much, someone's going to steal our clients or this or that. That's not the case. It, it, it was one of the biggest lies that we believed in at some point. So, yeah, that's that's what I do. That's that's an awesome explanation. And, um, yeah, just, just to speak to that point where people are, are afraid that their techniques or things are going to be stolen – if anything, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to give people respect. You know, it's like, wow, they're giving giving this away. Imagine what else they know. Imagine, you know, yes. like like they are like the the source. They are the experts. You know, so that's a, it's a fantastic um, fantastic change. I think that that, that you guys made. Very yeah, clever. it is an incredible um, feeling to know that we're so liberated at the moment that we share, we give all we've got to all different types of clients from all the three avenues that I mentioned to you guys. We just we just show up as our true selves. And like I said before, the only way and the reason why we can assist people on that level is because we've been through all of that ourselves, from the physical diseases and health issues to feeling stuck and not knowing where to go, to then being scared of people stealing clients or us not being good enough because we don't know as much as the other person. And that's what us allows us to assist people. Mm. Right on, and and I, I understand that you've uh, dealt with some some health issues yourself. Do you wanna do you wanna talk about any of those, or your most challenging one, and how you overcame it? The huh. there has been a lot, and um, on all different levels, from emotional to the the strictly physical, and all being very closely connected. Mm. And um, I'm sure you guys spoke to Cliff about his challenges as well. And I always used to say that, you know, oh, my stuff was nothing comparing to his because he nearly died a few times and this and that. However, he would then always go and say to people that he was in awe when I first shared my story with him that I was still here, basically. Mm. <laughs> so there, there has been a lot of different types of infections I've gone through, skin issues, um, depression panic attacks, parasites, just everything from the perspective that I understand it now and just to to break it down very quickly, any physical symptom that shows up in our body and in our life as a disease or a syndrome has an emotional background to it. So Mm. retrospectively, looking at everything that I've experienced in my life, it was all to do with the fear of showing up and standing in my own truth and in my own power and actually believing and seeing how powerful I was as a person. So going back to the parasite, which was probably one of the most profound um, health issues that I've experienced and the, the mm. removal process and the protocols that I was going through, the parasitic infection that I, before I found out that it was there, I had for at least 12 years, um, the bout of like, Depression and panic attacks linked together to the extent that I thought sometimes I was going to die because it hurt so much emotionally um, that I just thought I was going to disintegrate into a million pieces and just be swallowed up by the nothingness of space. Um, it was I, I just... think a lot of people, um, more than what we think, deal deal with yeah. similar issues. Yeah. What, what sort of a parasite was it? Do, do you know the name? It was or? Lamblia guardia, so one of the nastiest ones that, that is quite challenging to to remove and get rid of and, you know, eternal gratitude to our amazing mentor in London for assisting me with with that and going through... Sorry, who, was, who's the, who's the yeah. mentor? It's Raj Bhaktru. It's the okay, most yeah, we known talked about him. person. Uh, do you know of him? Well, uh, Cliff, Cliff mentioned him before yeah, in uh, I, his podcast. Yeah, I'm sure he would have done that. We absolutely love and adore Raj and we've learned so much from him. Um, Mm. And going back to the removal protocol that Mm. took just over six months, um, it was fascinating. Now going back again in memories, it was fascinating because as I was going through the removal process, every single symptom, every single thing that I've experienced in the 12 years, not knowing it was a contribution of that little Thing that lived inside me I've gone through that in six months in the shorter version so I relived 12 years of my life in six months 
to a very intense point where at one point we were visiting a friend in Spain and I had fits and panic attacks for eight hours nonstop, which never happened before. And Cliff was just sitting there holding my hand, not knowing what to do. He just knew that he just gets to be there and hold my space. And I just mm -hmm. kept telling him it will go. It will go in the moments of clarity in between before I went into it again. I, I knew it was going to pass and I knew deep down it was part of the healing process um, of actually letting go of it and not being as scared and afraid of it anymore. Um, so that was just a very, very powerful lesson. Because if you look into the emotional reasons behind having parasitic infections, it basically is a reflection of us handing our power away or over to someone else and feeling helpless Power, powerless and incapable so going back through the 12 years of me actually having had the parasite and then reliving that within six months or specifically during that one night was just a very very powerful lesson and understanding that any disease any physical symptom any infection we might go through is not there to mess us up to screw us up it's there to teach us something they're all very very powerful teachers in our life and when we shift our perception into looking at it like that, that's when we allow ourselves to shift our life and our entire perception of what experiences are, are happening Definitely. and what we're experiencing. Definitely. I, I agree. Everything we experience is, is a lesson um, from, from life and it's us, us to see that it is. And uh, yeah. sometimes we, we skip class. <laughs> so I, I know Brian's probably burning with a few questions. Um, so I'll, I'll let him, uh, I'll let him take the uh, the reins for a bit. Oh, I, I appreciate that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I, I had a, a few questions. I, I uh, you know, I'm friends with you on Facebook, and, and you've done several Facebook lives, and a couple of them have really stood out to me. The first one, kind of being uh, your most recent one, um, where I believe it was. My, it's my understanding that it was just after you and Cliff had a, a pretty good argument, and I'm just kind of. Yeah. I, I I first have to um, commend, I guess, is just the word that kind of comes up for me. Uh, your your ability to share with the world in that state. Uh, I mm. I personally um, I'm all right talking about that kind of thing after the fact, but when I'm actually in that state, I I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm not willing to do that, and, and so I just have to, to uh, commend you for, for being able to, to do that and share that with the world. Thank you. Huh. It was, for, for those of you guys listening that don't know what Brian is talking about, it was um, a few days ago where Cliff and I, uh, we don't call them arguments. We say that we, we don't really, they're not arguments, they're just triggers. They heated up con heated conversations and and exchanges of point to points of view that that are not us truly because anything that might come across as an argument or a disagreement is usually just our our stories getting in the way and it's not really us speaking is the the angry little boy in him and the angry little girl in me that they weren't heard they weren't seen uh loved and noticed just going rah at each other <laughs> so the thing is that, and this is something that has been a journey for me as well, um, understanding that the gift is in the darkest moments. And like I said about the parasitic infection and any other diseases that people might experience or symptoms being the teachers and the lessons is the same thing in those lowest moments where we might perceive like our world is falling apart or we've fallen out with the partner or, or kids or whoever it might be seeing it for what it truly is and is and having the awareness and consciousness of the fact that there's something in there always for us to learn from and very often to share with the world as well and in the past I used to feel like a fraud where I would be talking about integrity and I might have felt I was out of my integrity or I would be talking about relationships and what we call unlimited relationships and then I might have a disagreement or a heated <laughs> exchange of uh, points of view with Cliff. And I would feel like a fraud and think, how can I even be speaking to people about it if, if I'm doing or not doing the stuff that I talk about myself? However, it is from that that the inspiration comes. And it was literally after 
our shit showed up. We both triggered each other quite severely that I was sitting on the floor in my office, grounding myself, just breathing literally because I was so shaken up by what happened. Mm. And Cliff came in and in the past, it would have spiraled into days or weeks of energy that was off, us not really communicating properly and picking on each other and, and stuff like that. And at the moment, it's literally moments where it's something might show up and then either him or myself will come back into the experience, conscious and aware, and talk consciously. So he came in and asked me how I was feeling. And all I said, and that's that's what I that's why often people call me a witch as well, is because I trust my intuition hundred percent. My intuition told me, go and speak to people about it. So I literally picked up my phone, hit the live button on Facebook, and I shared because I knew so many women will resonate with what I was experiencing. So many guys will resonate with what women might be experiencing in those moments to understand their partners better. And that was how it kind of spiraled into that recent video of mine. And I absolutely adore it now. And the fact that I feel the urge to share and I feel comfortable being so vulnerable, so vulnerable and so open because only by allowing myself to fully feel my feelings and emotions, I can heal them and showing that to people that it's in fact an incredible thing to show their vulnerability to the world is just something that I, I love about my place of awareness and consciousness that I am, I'm in right now because in the past I would have crippled and I would have, wouldn't have been able to, to share any of that and that would affect me, my coaching, the interaction I've, had, I've got with people and the relationship I have with Cliff as well. Sounds like you've, uh, you've really grown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you can, you can call it like that. It's, it's choices guys. And again, people, and that's something that I struggled for a while with grasping. People always say, oh, it's just a choice. It's just a choice. It's just a choice. And people Bullshit. like, how can, how, how can it be a choice if I'm in my shit and I feel miserable and it hurts? How can it be a choice? It gets it's, to the point where, where literally you ask yourself in that moment, and it's, I always compare it to driving. When we get in the car first, we have no idea what to do. We've got that instructor whispering into our ear or shouting at us sometimes and telling us what to do, right? Hmm. And I went out to other people, coaches, mentors, to, to show me their journey, to show me their way. And then I took from those journeys that they shared with me what inspired me and applied it into my own experience. And at this moment in time, I can say that I'm driving comfortably and I don't require that instructor nowhere near as much. However, it takes several lessons before we get to that point where we get in the car and drive on our own comfortably, right? And it's the same thing with the consciousness and awareness that at this moment in time, it takes us moments where we snap out of being unconscious and going at each other with Cliff and having an, a disagreement to then go, okay, what's well, really true? Let's have a conscious conversation. It wasn't like that before all the time. It, it was a process of learning how to drive that vehicle, if that makes sense. For sure. And I liken it to kind of being able to step back and see the, the full picture. Yeah. And it, it takes a while to learn that. We're not we're not taught that in school, right? We're taught like mm -hmm. kind of, you know, live in the moment, be yourself, whatever, um, which is, is just great advice. But at the same time, living in the moment can get you caught up in the moment and you have to kind of see past it sometimes. Absolutely. And, you know, it's only today I was speaking to one of our clients about it. The, the great shift for me came when I realized and understood that I became more of an observer of my experiences uh -huh. rather than being deeply involved in it. Yep. Because when you're in it and in the middle of it, it might be like what you were saying, where you're in that moment, you just don't want to share. And it's fine because you are in that place, in that moment, honoring yourself and going through your experience. Sometimes I'm like that too, mm -hmm. where I will say to Cliff, Sometimes I will speak to my clients and say, guys, there's something that's showed up for me. I won't serve you in this moment 100% to my highest ability. Can we rebook a session? And they're super grateful for, it, for that because I'm showing up as myself. Mm -hmm. And I was speaking to one of my guys today, my one-to-one -one clients today about that, that 
the moment you become more of an observer of your experience, you're gifting yourself with the ability to see it from an outsider's perspective and see it for what it really is rather than filtering it through your past experiences that only bring up the anger, the resentment, the frustrations that we, we might have. Exactly. And, and that's what I love about that book, The Power of Now, yeah. because it, it taught me that like, no, like, you know, Claude is angry, right? Why is Claude angry? Like it just, it just made everything that I, that I thought really trivial because at the end of the day, like you said earlier, it's a choice. And for, for people to, to get to that point where it becomes a choice, it's, it's a journey sometimes. Yeah. You know, people don't want to kind of realize that they are in control. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not a journey sometimes. It's a journey every time. <laughs> <laughs> unless unless yeah, you're like Osho, you know, or something. <laughs> yeah. The, um, the Buddha. <laughs> yeah. The beautiful thing that. that I've also learned is that what I talk to my clients about very often is we tend to label things as, as habits or patterns that we get into. Habit is something that we don't know about, that we don't even know we're doing. And the moment we realize we're doing something, it then becomes a choice mm. because we've got an awareness and we still can continue choosing to repeat that pattern or behavior because we don't fully understand why we're doing it. However, without that awareness, oh shit, I'm doing this. Does it serve me? Does it not serve me? If it doesn't serve me, what do I now choose to shift that? Without that conscious awareness, we can't shift anything because we don't know about it. So yep. the moment we gain that awareness, a habit becomes a choice. That's awesome. I like it. Now, um, I know I'm going to probably steal Brian's question here, but how did you get into this into this business of, of helping people? How did I get into this business? By helping myself. Oh. I always say um, that one of the more profound moments for me was leaving home, which is Poland, back in 2004 and moving to to the UK, uh, to London with 300 pounds in my pocket, which I didn't, I had no idea how much or how little that was. It lasted me a week. Um, <laughs> wow. Literally, I, I had no comprehension. Um, so I had a suitcase and a backpack, 300 pounds in my pocket. I had no idea. I had all the intentions, no idea. And that was one of the most profound, without then realizing it, moment for me to, to embrace who I was, to embrace my capability and capacity as a human really because you know to to start with back in 2004 which is only 12 years ago I lived in a, a place with 12 other people that only had two bathrooms it was a horrible smelly kind of above a high street shops apartment kind of thing a flat or whatever you want to call it mm. um and to to now be in Cyprus living in what Cliff and I call our little paradise with beautiful sea views and our incredible house, living the unlimited life that we, we do. I forget about that. I very often forget about that. And someone told me once that the reason why we forget that is because this is our experience and we live it and we don't know any different. So just going through my own personal journey was something that definitely inspired me to, to share that with other people. Because when I saw what was actually possible, mm -hmm. I just... I felt the urge to, to share it with others and share it with the people that are ready when they reach out and are ready to take that step. That's, that's where I'm, I'm there for them. And that's the only way it can ever work because mm. I went through a, a stage of wanting to be the hero and the savior and save the entire world. We can't do that impossible because we can only ever assist people that are ready to take action. Mm -hmm. That's a huge, that's a huge lesson that um, it, it took me a while to learn myself. You know, you can't, you can't save everyone. You just, cause some people will just drag you down. You know, other people will say, oh, I'm fine. And then just continue drowning. Yeah. So, yeah. And do you know what was also powerful for me is that one thing is we can't save everyone, but the other thing is we can only ever save ourselves. Mm -hmm. And if someone chooses in on that experience on sourcing from that experience of mine, they can then assist themselves and save themselves so like we're talking about my videos my lies my posts on social media for example all of that stuff 
none of it is planned. It's all solely guided by my intuition. So sometimes there will be a week when I'm quiet and I'm not posting because in that moment in time, I'm either processing something of my own and there's no inspiration flowing because I require space. Sometimes I genuinely, there is no inspiration to, to share for whatever reason, it's irrelevant. And sometimes there will be several things in a week or in a day sometimes. So the reason, number one reason why I do that is because I'm serving myself because I honor myself and the commitment I made to myself about a year and a half ago is to always follow that calling and that urge to share something. So if it's there, number one reason for me sharing it is to serve myself because I promised myself that I was going to do that. And that's the reason why my posts and my videos might have the impact they do because of that genuine desire to serve me first by putting it out there. And if someone chooses in on experiencing that in their own individual way and sourcing their, some knowledge, wisdom of some sort, advice, a tip, and take it with them and use it to, to change their life and shift their life, that's incredible. But I can't affect what happens on the other side. That's, that's, it's profound, you know, and, um, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's definitely change does have to come from within. Mm. I mean, it's, it's pretty much the only way, um, yeah, now ma making sure that we're, we're serving ourselves first. It, it's the most key thing. We can only give something we have. So, Absolutely. Yeah, you can't rob Peter to pay Paul, you know, with, with energy, inspiration, whatever it may be. Or trying to save somebody when you're drowning yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> and and I, it's unfortunate that, that many, many people in the world, you know, are, are more focused on what other people are doing uh, than themselves. And, and frankly, I, I've been there myself. A lot well, of people attach the outcome to, to the outside of them be it a mentor or a coach, be it a training program, be it a doctor, partner, whatever it might be, we tend to place as humans very often um, the outcome on the outside of us and forget that everything is within. And yes, go and have a coach and a mentor. Go and do that training program. That's just a facilitation for you to step up to the next stage of your life, to the next level in your life. Because it allows us to see that outsider's perspective through someone, someone else. All of our clients, for you guys, your clients, for us, our clients, they're speaking to themselves through us. They just mm -hmm. utilize us as their permission slip, as their um, facilitators. And very often they don't understand it. And that's something, again, that we both speak to our clients about and give them the awareness that it's actually them doing it. We are just the facilitators for them to to create a desired shift or change in their life. Yep, we are the conduit. <laughs> yeah. So, Brian, age before beauty? Yes, ma'am. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. A, a, friend, a friendly rivalry between us two. Oh, yeah, always. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, uh, you know... Also Back to a, a, another video I, I've seen you post uh, a few weeks ago, I believe it was. Um, I, I would love to hear a little bit more about uh, creative energy and, and tapping into that and, and using that energy uh, to express creativity in the world. Um, you know, how, how do, do you have any, any specific tips that uh, uh, someone can use to, to really uh, tap into that creative energy and, and, and utilize that for... Um, for, for something, frankly, besides sex. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, sexual energy is creative energy. If, we, if we're looking from the basic primal perspective onto you know, a sexual act, it is to, to create a new life, right? So it is the, the most powerful creative act we can possibly imagine. And understanding that, and it's interesting because something that I was um, watching on YouTube yesterday there was a guy expressing um, his um, smoking habit. He smokes cigarettes, doesn't want to smoke cigarettes, but he finds that when he doesn't smoke cigarettes, he's overly horny, right? So all he wants to do is have sex, and his girlfriend travels a lot, so he can't do that. <laughs> the question the person he was speaking to asked him is that, 
where else do you feel like you're not being creative? Is there anything like art, painting, drawing, writing that you desire to do? And the guy's like, well, I've always wanted to write a book on empowerment. And he's like, okay, so why are you not doing it? Why have you not written that book yet? And then the guy came up with all sorts of different reasons um, that he had behind um, not writing the book. And the whole conversation basically revolved around understanding that perhaps that sexual energy could have been misinterpreted for the stifled creativity of him stopping himself from writing that book that he always wanted to write so bad because, and he didn't because he didn't believe he was good enough because the book wasn't going to sell and all sorts of excuses and, and reasons he came up with. So understanding that sexual energy is creative energy. And if there is a desire for us to create anything that automatically equals someone being out there in the world waiting for that idea of ours to be delivered to them in whatever way, shape or form, coaching books, films, paintings, art of any other you know, type, everything in this world and in this universe is ba based on resonance. So if we are desiring to create, be it a coaching program or a piece of art or sing or whatever else it might be, that automatically means there's someone waiting to receive it already. And then the reason why people might say, oh, no one buys my art, no one listens to my music or no one buys my coaching programs is not that that rule and that law doesn't work. In between the moment where we have a creative idea and the moment where we put it out there and physically put it in, in a physical form, we live in a physical reality. Therefore, things require things and process and, and the creation process requires that physical action. Mm. So the thought process then goes into words are speaking to it, then to, to physical actions. That's the, that's the process of creation, thoughts, words and actions. What happens in between the first original thought and idea then our personal bullshit gets in the way. So stories as to what I was explaining to you guys like that guy yesterday, oh, the book won't sell, or I don't know if I'm a good enough writer, I don't know if I have enough time. And therefore we create dissonance between us and the people that are already somewhere out there seeking something. They might not necessarily realize. So let's say last week or earlier this week, what's today? Wednesday, Tuesday, right? Tuesday. So last week, an idea came through me powerfully to create a women-only mastermind. And the only reason why that mastermind might not happen is if I allow my excuses, aka reasons, aka bullshit stories, get in the way. <laughs> the women out there, the moment that inspiration came through me, automatically meant that there's women out there moving around in their seats at work, in the office, or pottering around the house going, oh, I feel like I get to do something, whether it is to assist myself. Something somewhere would have shifted in their perception. If they might have no idea it's going to be Marta Wilde from, you know, unlimited life, whatever. They might have no idea. However, somehow, somewhere, if they're supposed to be in my space and I'm supposed to be in their space, our, our paths will cross between now and the point where the master, women only mastermind starts. Does it make sense? No, completely, completely. Like the blockage is, is within yourself. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's why a lot of people, um, give up on their dreams. It's just, yes. it's just, they just never realize that they have to, to push through the bullshit for, for lack of a, Better because words we again putting that. yes, we're putting perceptions and expectations on what if what it, what it has to look like. Because for me, for example, coming up with that idea last week, if I insist strongly on it having to look a very specific way, because this is how I originally imagined it, and it has to start on that specific date, when then I might have six people come in to me and say. I would love for it to look like that. Or can we start a little bit later? If that aligns with me and my intentions, for me to deny myself doing that, it's again just my perceptions and bullshit stories getting in the way and stopping me from doing it. Yep. 
And the only reason like why people might say no one buys my art, no one gets on my coaching program, no one's want, no one wants to listen to my music, whatever it might be that we create it, it could be other stuff. I'm talking about the, the more artistic expressions in singing, drawing, painting, or coaching, which is the more elusive side. It could be physical products. When we create a physical product, a tangible thing that we can physically touch, and someone says, yeah, I've created that business and I've created that idea because I was so inspired and it excited me at the time, but no one wants to buy it. It's only because there is a belief of some sort that no one will that got in the way and created dissonance between us having that creative idea and then bringing the people that are already out there waiting for it to be delivered to them into our world so if I was to say anything and kind of boil it down to the essence of it is trusting our intuition and trusting our creative ideas that if we inspired to do something, it's trusting and knowing that there are people out there already waiting for it. And if they're not coming, it's not that our idea is shit <laughs> or that it's not good enough. It's because we just allowed some sort of story to get in the way. And that's then starting an exciting process of discovery of oh, wow, I know this is how it works. I know there's already people waiting for it out there. They're not here just yet. So what is it that I'm believing in and making true to me that's stopping me from bringing them into my experience? How exciting is that? It, it's, it, like, it's like you said, it's the start of a journey and that's, that's an yes. awesome way to think about it. I mean, I think that's a super healthy and helpful way to go and about again, that. It's, it's been a, a learning process of learning how to drive this vehicle. There are so many different cars that I've learned to drive in my life, but it's just so exciting. The more we do it, the more exciting it gets because we know that nothing ever shows up in our lives to screw us over. We don't ever create anything to, to hinder ourselves. The greatest lessons, just like I was talking about diseases, parasites, infections, the greatest lessons and experiences very often come to us in a way that we would never imagine because we label it bad or wrong or, or terrible or horrible or whatever we want to call it is that we're missing the point and the lesson and the beautiful feedback from it mm. awesome now um brian if if you uh do, do you have some more questions because i, I kind of want to go back to 1996 uh, i can i can tell you you've go, go ahead ma'am <laughs> <laughs> all right marta can you take us back to 1996 and climbing the highest mountain in poland oh wow you've done some digging guys haven't you <laughs> a little bit a little bit I, I never did my homework in school so now i'm, I'm catching up uh yes. <laughs> right <laughs> oh man i'm getting all emotional that was an epic day i um take us into it how, how did it yeah, start yeah 1996 um so 12 years old then what happened I was um, told by the doctors again well that's why some most of our clients come through the, the physical health um, avenue to us and um, I was told by the doctors that I couldn't really um, do much in terms of physical um, exertion because I was passing out for no reason and um, just no one really knew what was going on with me and they couldn't put a label if you like on me because there wasn't a physical diagnosis I would just wake up in the morning once or twice a week maybe pass out for no reason um which I know exactly what was going on right now but back then no one really knew um mm. and they said you know that you can't exert yourself you can't do this you can't do that and I was like screw this I I love climbing mountains I love trekking and hiking and I, I used to do that with my mom every year and um and then started doing it myself and then with my friends and took cliff a few times and it kind of evolved into that great passion of mine and and I did and you know being aware of the fact that yes I might have had some issues with with balance and and maybe feeling dizzy at points nothing nothing like that happened because I was following my excitement mm. and those moments where I was passing out at home were the moments where I didn't actually want to do what I was told that I was supposed to do. Does it make sense? And I yeah. broke through that perception and that, that label of you can't or you can't do that because we told you so, but we don't really know what's going on, but go with that anyway. <laughs> it's like right. chains holding you down. Yeah, literally. And you know those pictures that kind of float around Facebook of a horse tied into a plastic chair? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And him staying in the same place because he's tied into something, it's it's questioning everything. Cliff and I always talk to people, question everything. The 
The quality of a life depends on the quality of the questions we ask. And even more so when we're making statements that we believe in, like me making a statement, I am going to climb that freaking mountain because I'm so excited about it. And I did, and I was fine. And, and just out of curiosity, how long did it take? And uh, how, how did you get the idea to, to do it? <laughs> how did I take the, get the idea? It's, it's the part of the, the, the Polish mountains, because all the south part of Poland is all different types of mountain ranges. And the Tatra Mountains, where the highest mountain in Poland is, is the, the only alpine kind of range um, that we have in Poland. And it's just such a stunning place. And that's where my heart lives. And my mom... Um, used to take me there every year and because my dad traveled with us a little bit to start with but then he has a heart condition and and, uh, really bad asthma and stuff like that so he he couldn't do that with us um, Mm. at some stage so me and my mom just continued following our excitement right so the thing is that I've done every single trail every single peak in in that part of the Polish mountains just because my mom and I explored and loved exploring so much. And, and one day it was like, okay, do you feel you can do that? Well, yeah, I can. Are you excited about it? Yeah, I am. Well, let's do it. Let's get up really early. Let's go and do it. And, and to even get to that point is a 10K trek just first to get to the big lake and the mountain hut from which the, the main ascent starts to, to get to the top of the highest mountain. So it, it was the entire day, basically, and it was quite... I can't remember exactly if we talking distances and the elevation. However, it was an entire day's trip. And I remember coming back, we were both exhausted. And I still remember I was drinking a black currant drink. It wasn't Ribena, but it was something fizzy with black currant flavor. And now it reminds me why I'm so connected to black currant flavor and why I love it so much, because it takes <laughs> me back to that memory, right? Mm, okay. um, and just and laughing and, and joking. And I remember, you know, that state when you're just so exhausted that you just don't really know what to do with yourself and you just giggle uncontrollably. That was me <laughs> uh, like eight or nine o'clock in the evening when we were coming back to where me and my mom are always staying in the mountains. So it's That's Brian such- every evening. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Marta, I, 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 I do you- tend to giggle like a little girl. But- this is true. I've heard it. Marta, how did you feel when you got to the top, to, to the summit? Oh, there is a picture of me. There is a little because the the actual peak, the the top of the mountain is a Polish and Slovakian border. So there is a little like a marker that says Poland on one side and Slovakia on the other side. And I've got a picture of me um, sitting on it with my arms, like, you know, punching my fists up in the air and that <laughs> big white grin on my face. It's incredible. It was just so awesome. And because I've always been short, I'm only about five five foot one or two. Um, so I'm a short ass and it, you know, climbing up to the top, there's ladders, there's chains, um, there is quite steep ascents at some point. So, you know, it was challenging for me and there were people helping me, assisting me, you know, grabbing me. Literally, I was like reaching out and they would just pull me up wherever I couldn't reach and, and stuff like that. And just, it was a moment where I just surrendered to the experience. And that's awesome that you guys brought it up because it's just bringing so many memories back now. And, and I can see it for what it really was. It was surrendering to the nature, to being one with nature, to trusting other people, which we forget so often in our lives. And it was just a, an incredible sense of achievement. Yeah, I think it's a great metaphor for life, kind of. Huh? Definitely, yeah. definitely. And knowing that it's okay to reach out and ask for help sometimes when you 100%. feel like you can't reach to the next chain or the next ladder or whatever it might be on that physical mountain. It's the same thing yep. in life. And on the way down, sometimes I couldn't reach to the next step down. I would just sit on my ass and slide down. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you have to sit on your ass and yeah. slide down, you know, that's part yeah, of the journey. And, and it's fun. <laughs> Well, I, and I'd, uh, I know we're on some time constraints. So, Brian, do you want to lead us into the, um, the wrap-up questions if you, uh, if you don't have any further uh, sure. follow-ups? Yeah. Um, so what would be um, maybe your, your top three books uh, that have impacted your life, that, that just oh, uh, right off the top of your head? There's so many. Um, firstly, when I was playing around with the idea of, of energy and how – how the universal laws work. It's it's a book called E Squared by Pam Groud, and it's 
it's something that we get all of our clients to read at the beginning of our journey. We give them an invitation to read that book. Um, and it's nine experiments where you just basically make statements and stuff just happens. And it's so awesome. It's just great fun. Yeah, um, actually, you're, you're the second person that's mentioned that book. So I, I didn't get the message the first time from the universe. So now, there you go. now, now I'm getting it. <laughs> it is great fun. And then there is a continuation, E-cubed, where there's more experiments. And it is just the greatest fun ever. Um, so that was something that kind of started me off on on that journey. And then something that's very new and very recent to me in terms of a physical book, the con some of the concepts I, I knew of before and I understood. Before, however, The Enlightened Sex by David Data, it is such a powerful tool for us to understand the masculine and the feminine energies within us as humans, because you guys will have both masculine and feminine. We girls will have both masculine and feminine and how we get lost in understanding why we might not communicate with our partners, why we might not communicate with ourselves the way we used to. That's fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. And he doesn't even talk about sex as much in the first um, few chapters. It's just understanding why we are the way we are. Where, where do we get so lost and how to go about shifting our experiences and elevating ourselves into an even greater understanding? And mm. then um, the third will be two books, really, but yeah, the same fine. author. So um, it's Bruce Lipton and his biology of belief and the honeymoon effect, okay. the science of creating heaven on earth. So Bruce Lipton's stuff, especially at, towards the beginning of my journey and, and working with my clients in the, the aspects that I do work with them right now, that was something that very powerfully shifted my perception on, on how our beliefs shape our reality, how to go about shifting those beliefs, how to find them in the first place. And then from the biology of belief, moving on to the, uh, the honeymoon effect, where he talks a lot more about relationships and not just romantic relationships, but any relationships, in fact, that we get into in our lives and understanding that every relationship is there for us to, um, to just learn more about ourselves. So that's that's the third one. There is one more that I completely forgot about that was super profound. Can I mention it? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> the more the merrier. Conversations well, with God. Remember, Marta, you live yeah. an unlimited life. So true. Go Why ahead. Ask a question, <laughs> right? So yes. Yeah, so screw that. Another book is Conversations with God, and um, again, it sounds godly and holy. It's not. It's Neil Donald Walsh's. I don't know if you guys are aware of it. Um, mm -hmm. Neil Donald Walsh's conversation and dialect dialogue with what he will um, call God, but it is just our intuition. The thing is that everything we teach, everything all other coaches, mentors teach, is the same truth. It's just expressed in our own personal ways. So it is any questions we might ever have around humanity, evolution, religion, relationships, sex anything about our life it's all in there black mm. and white beautiful and you know the the first original um books are a, tr a trilogy there's three of them however there's a lot more now i think there's nine a continuation of that it is just such a powerful read mm. however it's one of those like the power of now that you guys mentioned before someone might look at the power of now it's and think what a lot of rubbish to start <laughs> with and that's where i was a few years ago i was like what is he on about and then yeah. at some point you're drawn to it again and you read it and you think, shit, and it shifts your life. <laughs> the Power of Now is the book that literally shifted Cliff. And I woke up. He couldn't sleep one night. He was experimenting with some supplement and reacted with the food he was eating. Cut the long story short, he couldn't sleep. And he was reading a different book already. However, he was drawn to that one on his Kindle. And he literally read The Power of Now cover to cover overnight. And I woke up to a different person. I woke up, went downstairs. That was still when we were living in the UK. A couple of years uh, ago and I was like who the hell are you <laughs> literally a different person and that's what I feel the conversations uh, with God did to me mm, that's, when I did that. those those kind of profound books and experiences I love it and like you said not everybody's ready for it at that moment and it's yeah. it's yeah. one of those things where me like 10 years ago I'd been like get the hell out of here I'm not going to read that crap I'm going to read some comics or something instead. <laughs> <laughs> right. a lot of times we have to cycle back back to things yeah. yeah, absolutely, definitely. Now, um, when you think of the optimum human, what what comes to mind? It can be a person, a set of values, or uh, you know. 
The optimum human, I would say it's a human that lives their unlimited life. <laughs> oh, I like it. I oh, like it. So yourself, you are the optimum <laughs> human? <laughs> Yeah, I could call myself that, definitely. Claude, we get definitely. to end the podcast now. We, we, all right. we found it. So we're done. We, we're, we're done. <laughs> we'll <laughs> give you the all the passwords to the, to the websites and, uh, and, and all our uh, social media. You can take over. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, into that just a little are, bit. Hey, mm -hmm. what's that? Can you get into it just a little bit? To our, our website and social media? No, 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 just, uh, just <laughs> oh, to the, the optimal human. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, the, the thing is that Cliff and I have 12 principles that, that, um, that are the, the definition of unlimited life for us. And I could get into all 12 of them. However, I know we're on a, on a time constraint <laughs> here. It is really an optimum human who lives their, their unlimited life is a person that follows their excitement, whatever it might be, from what we might label as the smallest to the greatest steps, trust their intuition, and understands that we are the creator, they are the creator of their own experience and they are their own reality, and that there is no good or bad, no right or wrong, everything just is, and it's for us to define whether it serves us in this specific moment or not, and choose our conscious steps in order to either hold on to what it is that we believe in or let go of it because either way it will enhance our lives and experiences. I love it. I love it. That's, that's an awesome answer. And, um, that it, I mean, that, that, that sums, sums up my thoughts on, on that. Um, so we, we were going to segue earlier, but let's do it now. Where can people find, um, you, you on social media, your website? Social media is, Probably Facebook will be the main place I will mention today. Uh, mm -hmm. We are actually in a very exciting process of rebranding and moving from what used to be called Wild Performance, because we our um, surname is Wild, and and that's that's how we um, first created it. And we're moving more into the Unlimited Life project and Unlimited Life idea, and also being. Because everyone calls, refers to us as Cliff and Marta. Not many people talk about wild performance anymore. Mm -hmm. So we're moving towards being Cliff and Marta wild. And that's what the new website will be um, in the next couple of months. However, where I would love to invite everyone who feels drawn to anything I was speaking about today, where I would love to invite them to, to go to is a free group on Facebook. And you can find it by typing in Unlimited Life Project free group and, and join the group. There is a lot of incredible stuff that we share. Anything that comes through us as an inspiration is there. We invite people to our 28 day challenge. That's just a, a very new um, concept that we've created. Um, and you, you can think, you know, we always say it's not sprint, it's a marathon, but the shifts that people have had through the 28 day breakthrough challenge has, have just been immense. People went from you know, selling their houses and businesses that they weren't passionate about to moving to south of France because they wanted to do that all their life, leaving relationships, starting relationships, leaving careers, starting new careers, all sorts of incredible stuff that you think could never be possible in 28 days. And it's just because they realize they're creators of their own experiences. So Unlimited Life Project free group on Facebook. Awesome. Awesome. We'll definitely put that in the show notes. Thank you. And, uh, do you have any parting words for our uh, listeners? Any empowering words? No, empowering, parting. It can be like, parting, parting have words, a good one, okay. guys. It can be like, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I rock. Anything, really. Everyone rocks say. in their own <laughs> individual way. And um, the question, what came to me just now, and again, trusting my intuition always, um, a question someone asked me um, back in 2007, I believe. And it was my, my very first therapist, if you like. Um, the question was, what if your only fear was your own power? Holy shit. <laughs> I, think, I think that's a great, uh, great place to, to end the podcast today. Great parting Thank words, eh? <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. That's like a, a hard, hard period, you know, at the end of the chapter. Marta, yeah. thank you very much for coming on. And um, we'll... We'll definitely uh, be in touch. I want to do an episode with you and your lovely husband. 
That would be amazing. Just make sure it's a little bit longer. We've got like half of the day or something. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, we'll probably have like a three-day marathon. <laughs> yeah. Thank you All guys right. for having me. Perfect. Well, thank you. Uh, appreciate you uh, for, for taking the time and, and sharing your, your uh, wisdom with us. Pleasure. My absolute pleasure. All right. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Optimum Human Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please remember to head on over to iTunes and give a five-star rating and review, which will help spread the word to more awesome listeners just like you. Head on over to TheOptimumHuman.com and subscribe to the free newsletter and get The Optimum Human's Blueprint to the Optimum Life. Download it instantly. Thanks for listening.